Howdy everybody, welcome back to the Master French. So we're going to cover bloat today. Um, I see a couple of people lost their dogs recently to bloat. So let's go over a few things. Here's our uh, big pal Cash Man, going to be our little bit of a model today. So bloat is, a, it really affects these deep chested dogs. And it's a direct result of them not being able to expel excessive gas. So what you want to look out for is if he'll lay down for me. Here, I'll show you. Good boy. In this area right here, when they're standing up, you're going to see this start to swell. And you see his rib cage is going to be right about here, and his stomach is right in here. So like I say, you'll see this area start to swell. You'll notice that your dog can't get comfortable. They want to pace. They're panting really hard. Um, you'll also look. They have a lot of frothy foam coming from around their mouth. So a few things we can do. Um, number one thing is, if you notice your dog is starting to bloat, get some gas -X into your dog. At least a couple of tablets. Um, we know it works okay too, but I've had better luck with the gas -X. It seems to work quicker. Um, and then once you've gotten the gas X in them, you know, keep your dog as calm as you can, but you need to get it to the vet right away. When that stomach bloats, it actually kind of starts to float in the abdomen, and it can actually flip. It'll twist over, and then that cuts off the blood circulation and everything, and it'll end up killing your dog, unfortunately. So, that's what it is. Um, bloat is just a, like it is, it's just bloat, um, the stomach it blows up. Now, there are a few things we can do, okay, um, keeping your dog calm before and after meals, at least a half hour either way. Watch that they don't get an excessive amount of water, at least a half hour either way. Um... Try to feed at least two smaller meals a day. Um, keep them, like I say, calm is huge. Once you've gotten to the point where you've got your dog into a routine, most of us establish that right from the puppyhood stage. They get rather used to it. Um, I've had a few rescues where you just have to take the water away from them. There's nothing you can do about it. So, now a lot of vets are going to, and a lot of people are doing it, when you take your dog in for your spay or your neuter, they're tacking the stomach to the lining, the abdomen lining. Okay, now let's dispel a few myths right away. It is a good thing, but it does not prevent bloat. Tacking the stomach to the wall of the abdomen, what that does is prevents the torsion. That's the flipping of the stomach. Blow alone actually can kill a dog. Um, but twisting the stomach is almost always like 99.999% a death sentence. So, you know, it's really important that you guys know this stuff. Know what to look out for. Like I say, look out for the swelling in this region. And you'll know, um, a lot of dogs, when they eat, they're always going to get a little, you know, they get that full belly syndrome. But if it goes past that, that's when you need to start thinking about taking care of it. Now, there are some things your vet can do, um, even after the gas X is administered. Oftentimes, they'll run a tube down their throat into the stomach to expel the gas. It can be done, um... But it's something you should learn how to do from your vet. Not something I'm going to cover in a video. Because it's kind of dangerous. Oh, excuse me. So, that's where we're at, guys. Blow affects your giants. Um, Deep-chested dogs more than any other. Another thing we're starting to learn is we think that it's actually connected, connected by genetics. So if there's a dog in the line that's bloated, there's always an increased risk. 
any deep chest a dog can bloat. Great Danes are terrible for it. Mastiffs are terrible for it. So just know the signs, you know, the swelling of the stomach, the pacing and panting. And once you get to the frothing stage, then you're really going to have issues. So again, the ways that we work to avoid that, feed at least two smaller meals a day, not one big one. Don't free feed. Um, free feeding just leads to disaster because you don't know when they've ate. Take your dog out for an exercise run or something and they've ate. They can bloat. What I like to do is mix water in their food before I feed it to them. Not a lot, um, just kind of enough to cover the food. Let it sit for a few minutes, kind of soak that up. That's another way. Um, a surefire way to avoid bloat is to feed raw. Um, I, I know it sounds gross. It's not something I do. Um, not because I don't think it's good. I think it's super healthy for the dogs. Every dog I know that gets fed raw does great. But with the amount of dogs and the rescue I have, it's just not feasible for us to do that right now. So there's other, there's, you know, these other little tricks that we do. Um, like I say, <clears throat> have maximum strength gas X on hand. Get a couple of tablets in them right away. If you notice that stomach swelling up more than normal, your dog's pacing just can't get comfortable in the panting. Those are the signs you got to look out for. So, again, at least a half hour post and prior feeding. Limit their water. Limit their exercise. Don't let them get excited. I know sometimes that's not easy when they're young. Believe me, I know. Put a little bit of water in their food to kind of soften it up. Above all, you can always feed raw. Um, stomach tacking. I, I recommend it, I guess. Um, any dog that I have fixed will have that done now. But remember, it's not a cure and it's not a guarantee. There's always a chance that that can fail and your dog can still torsion. Bloat alone, folks, is pretty deadly. So keep that in mind. Um, you're always going to have to be looking out for it. Know your warning signs. Take care of your pups. Again, guys, if there's anything you want me to cover that I haven't covered yet, let me know. Um, I'd be more than happy to. You can email me at masterfranchandrescue at gmail.com. Um, or if you follow me on Facebook, you can send me a message. Shoot a message to the homepage, Master Ranch and Rescue LLC on Facebook. We're just here to share some knowledge, guys. Try to help you guys out, get a little more info on them. Try to dispel some of the rumors that are out there, some of the myths. Um, one thing I want to cover while I'm thinking about it. A lot of people think one of two ways. Either using a raised bowl leads to an increased risk or it decreases the risk. There is no proof either way that raised feeders affect bloat, none. Um, I use raised feeders for the older guys like Cashman here because he's so tall and he has so many joint issues. It's actually harder on him to eat from the floor. So he gets, a, he gets fed out of a raised feeder. Um, like I say, guys, just know the signs. Know what to do. Make sure you have an emergency vet or someplace to go. If you're in an area where you don't have an emergency vet, ask them to show you how to do the tube stuff. Um, make sure you know. It's always good knowledge to have. All right, guys, have a good day. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. I know I'm a little bit late, but we've been a little bit busy around here. Um, happy holidays, guys. We'll talk to you all later. Bye.